Creativity is a weird beast, isn't it? It comes and it goes. Sometimes it's your idea, sometimes it's someone else's idea. Sometimes it feels like it came out of nowhere and you're just struck with inspiration and then you gotta work on it other days. I don't really know much about it, but I wanna find out more. So I invited an expert over and we're gonna talk about it. So Robbie is, he's an interesting fellow. He used to be a master Lego builder. He wrote a symphony. And on top of that, he drives around the country just fixing old cars, specifically old VWs. Look at that. What a beautiful car. Welcome. What do you got here? Hey, I'm Robbie. Hey, Alex, good Great. to meet you. This is Buddy, my 1969 bus. Whoa. You can see I have a thing for orange. I can tell, yeah. <laughs> this is cool. You got a skateboard too? Yeah, you know, when you break what? down, you gotta go get parts somehow. Oh, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Well, this is my puppy. 1988 Westfalia, two-wheel drive. Very nice. I hope we get to drive it. Oh, you're gonna, oh, we're gonna drive <laughs> All it. All right. It definitely, it definitely starts. Okay. Is there creativity in fixing a car? Like, there has to be. Really? There has to be, you know? No situation is perfect. If you're fixing it, already something's wrong. So you're usually not somewhere ideal. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time, these cars, mine's 50 years old. I'm not gonna walk into AutoZone and be able to find many parts, if any, for it. Yeah. Are you gonna be able to, Take your your Boy Scout knife and no, I already my cautious no. no no okay so I don't even have a Boy Scout knife so I already am at zero. You're gonna be able to take your 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 uh, nail clippers from your from your cabinet in the yeah. back and you're gonna be able to modify your shift bushing that you can get to fit a car that's no. not the right car. No, never. That's what I face almost daily, like in, in my in my job. Like a car MacGyver. Yeah, a lot of I the, guess. a lot of the repairs I've done on the side of the road have been have been car MacGyver. Hi, can I get uh what do you want? Medium French fry and two plain tacos. A medium French fry French and two French tacos. What's that? French tacos. And two regular crunchy tacos. I don't have my wallet. You have a picture of your is that your This is my bus on, All right. on my I don't want to show card. it. That's fine. You're, I'll, I'll you're, hide the yeah. last numbers. I don't know, I don't even trust that for some reason. Just don't even <laughs> don't even do the bit. If anything, what I'm doing and teaching people is how to do this with the caveat that it, we're in 2019 that this is not 1969. This is not 1984. Yeah, you know, I think you could argue that we are in 1984. Right now, George we are in Orwell's <laughs> Look, camera, camera, right, camera, uh, right, camera. <laughs> Do you have a process? I prefer working with limitations. Really? Everything, everything, visual or music or uh, unusual that I have made that I would consider creative has come with a set of limitations. Like with visual photography, it's like you have five minutes to work here. Better be good. Uh, with Lego models that I've built and sculpted, it's like, all right, you have these design parameters. Oh, by the way, kids have to be able to climb on it, it has to be safe. So these kinds <laughs> don't of- Don't kill any children is a pretty don't, good- Don't, do not harm, maim, or, or otherwise influence children in a negative way. When I think of creativity, the way it kind of works is like, it's either highly forced, and like, I have to just like push my brain to be like, you're going to do this, and this is what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. uh, or it comes from that like, where the hell did this come from? But I guess I gotta work with it now because it's here. I feel best about something when I'm giving a little bit of a limitation, mm -hmm. but not someone telling me what to do because then I can I feel like I can make progress towards something. And whether it's just getting something started or coming up with a form for something, like a lot of the a lot of the creativity happens in those like logistical decisions. I sit in my car and I don't know what to do next. I just I need a change. I need some kind of change. So let's say I'm trying to diagnose a car that's not cooperating. I will do something drastic just to see what the effects are. It's almost like a miniature scientist in me trying to run experiments on things. <laughs> and like, we know it needs this to run, so let's take this thing it needs out and see how that affects the problem. And if it doesn't change anything, then we've narrowed down sort of an area, so now I can focus within a certain set of parameters and ignore all the noise and concentrate on the signal. An important part of my process is getting to like the point where I'm sitting down and staring at the blank page or computer monitor or engine that's not working and mm -hmm feeling like I know nothing. I get to the start of every project and I'm like, how do I do this again? And that's an important part of the process for me. So I, I think that what kind of makes me enjoy the process so much is that I'm always learning. Mm -hmm. And with every project comes the opportunity to try something new. Do you think everyone can be creative? 
Do I they have so. it in them? I think so. Really? Yeah. I think some people are better at certain things than others, but after that, I don't really think there's many laws that pertain to like humans and creativity. Mm -hmm. I feel like if more people were asked to be creative, they would find that in them. Interesting. To let someone know, you are creative, you just maybe you're not thinking that what you're doing is creative. Yeah. Or they just, someone hasn't found the craft that allows their creativity to come through. Yeah, exactly. You know? But does it still count as creativity if you never never make anything of it, right? Like you get an idea and it just stays mm -hmm. and then that's it. I don't know if you have to bring it out into the world for it to be, for you to be considered creative, but for anyone else to know it, that's probably gonna be the easiest way. That's a fair point. You can't convince someone that you have a symphony in your head. Oh, I can. So I need, I need the guitar. Uh, so you can see we match styles. So just more mellow, more mellow. Yeah. We, got, we almost got something at the end. So I know you've mentioned it like 10 times and it just we haven't taken a minute to like let it soak in. You write symphonies. I wrote a lot of classical music, yeah. Really? What I, can, what I call classical music because what we think of as like orchestras and wind ensembles and chamber music, yeah. we consider classical. <laughs> What got you doing that? When I was younger, I had a playlist on my iPod called Music with Words, and there was like six or eight songs on there because I liked listening to instrumental music. When it comes time as like a young adult to start making music, I wrote the music that I listened to most, which was instrumental music descriptive of something. So is that a, like a different thought process for you? Like, how, is it, how does that I think so, do it? because sometimes in the creative process, you start with like an idea. And for me, my idea for one of the wind symphonies I wrote was like a time-lapse video of like a sunrise over the desert. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a piece in four sections about, you know, a, a day in the desert where you watch the sun come up and then like you uh, take a nap in the park and get a little bit of a sunburn and then like yeah. you ride your bike through downtown and then you like watch the sunset over the lake. So I, like I wrote music about these four things. Another time I wrote for a chamber ensemble and it was the day, it was like the, the week of the concert and I didn't have a title picked out. Good. The working title was like a four letter word. Um, so I was like, wait, what about four letter word? What if I call it four letter word? And then it turns out that like, as a kid, like I cussed in front of my dad and we never talked about it. Uh -uh. So that the premiere of the piece of music, I told him, I was like, hey dad, maybe like this sounds a little better than hearing your second grade son cuss. And that piece of music was the first time I ever really mentioned that whole experience to my dad, who didn't mention it to me either. It was kind of a, we're just not going to talk <laughs> about this situation. So music was my way of apologizing to my dad and maybe giving him something that sounded a little better than his second grader son cussing. It sounds massive and gargantuan to me. I know it's because I don't do it, it. And it feels that way when you look at the blank page. Yeah. And then when you start breaking down what has to happen, it's it's all things I've done before. You know, I've written music before. I've, I've notated parts before. But every time you start it, it's you feel like a child again. You're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's just mm -hmm. part of the process for me. At the same time, I've also been in situations where like, I have a piece of music due tomorrow. I have to deliver this piece of sheet music to someone who paid me to write it for them, mm -hmm. and it's not done yet. That's a good and feeling. And it has to be finished. That's a good feeling. And the music <laughs> I write, the music I write in necessity versus the music I write from inspiration sound very different. But luckily they complement each other so I can often mix them. Oh, that's even good. In, so even at the same time you can overlap them sometimes. One's not worse than the other one. No, I don't think they're any worse. They're one significantly more frustrating to write as ah, a composer. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully that angst can or cannot come out in the music depending on the context. I want to thank Robbie McCarthy for hanging out with me. He's such a, you're a chill dude. He's just a cool guy. Learned a lot about creativity. More than I actually expected to learn because I thought I knew everything. I don't. I don't know anything. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out the playlist below. Some of them are about creativity and some of them are just about songs that I like to listen to when I'm being creative. See you later. Thanks for watching. I, uh, my car's here. I don't know what I was thinking.